of the nature of the rulers. And I'm gonna jump into this here in just a second. All right, here we go. The nature of ru the rulers, the real nature of the authorities. Concerning the reality of the authorities, the great apostle, through the spirit of the father of truth, referred to the authorities of darkness and told us, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the authorities of the world and the spirits of wickedness. That is uh, so very straight out of Ephesians. I have sent you this writing because you have asked about the real nature of authorities. The leader of the authorities is blind because of his power, ignorance, and arrogance. He said, with power, I am God, there is no other but me. When he said this, he sinned against the realm of the all. This boast rose up to incorruptibility, and a voice answered from incorruptibility and said, You are wrong, Samael, which means blind God. Okay, here's God again. Blind God, as we went over the uh, verse in Genesis 1.26. His thoughts were blind. He expressed his power, that is, the blasphemy he had uttered, and pursued it down to chaos and his mother, the abyss, at the inst instigation of Christus Sophia. She established each of his offspring according to his power, after the pattern of the eternal realms above. After the pattern of the eternal realms above. See, that's, a, that's, that's deep right there, too, man. It's just, it just goes on, to, it just keeps explaining that all things are done according to the will of God. See, uh, even his name is Blind God, that's what he is, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just what it is. See, we gotta understand that God's never wrong, you know what I'm saying? But this is Blind God, here, this is just a part of his... You know what I'm saying? This is one of his pieces in his grand scheme of all that is. You know what I'm saying? It's just to express himself and to have the glory for what he is and what he has done. You know what I'm saying? Like, God is God, man. Nobody's ever going to change that. That's what he wants people to know. That's what he's. That's why he says, holy, holy, holy over here. It's because the ones that know worship. Worship the true and living God, okay? It's simple stuff, it really is. It's Christianity, man. <sighs> After the pattern of the eternal realms above, for the visible originated from the invisible. Yeah, we already explained that as well. Incorruptibility looked down into the region the waters. <coughs> Her image appeared as a reflection in the waters, and the authorities of darkness fell in love with her. But they could not grasp the image that appeared to them in the waters, for they were weak, and that and what is only of soul cannot grasp what is of spirit. For the authorities were from below, but the image of incorrupti incorruptibility was from above. This is why incorruptibility looked down into that region, so that by the Father's will she might bring all into union with the light. The creation of Adam and Eve. The rulers made plans and said, Come, let us create man from soil from the earth. They formed their creature as a being entirely of the earth. These archons have bodies that are both female and male, and faces that are the faces of beasts. They took soil from the earth and formed their human after their own bodies and after the image of God that had appeared to them in the water. He said, come, 
Let us grasp the image by means of the form we have shaped, so that the image may see its male partner and fall in love with it. And we may seize it with the form we have shaped. They did not understand understand the power of God because they are powerless. This is amazing stuff. This is explaining Genesis 126. Very few people have touched on, very few uh, pastors have touched on uh, Genesis 126. And it, it's, it says vain show, a phantom. They created in the image Man was created in, in a phantom, a shade, a vain chill, an idol. Okay? This is explaining all of that right here in the Dog of Cody series, The Nature of the Rulers. This is amazing. Because they are powerless. Samael blew into his face, and the human acquired a soul, and stayed upon the ground for many days. The rulers could not make him arise, because they are powerless. Like storm winds, they kept on blowing, that they might try to capture the image that appeared to them in the waters. And they did not know what its power was. All these things came to be by the will of the Father of the All. Later, the spirit saw the person of soul upon the ground. The spirit came forth from the Adamite land. It descended and made its home within it. And that person became a living soul. And the spirit called his name Adam, since he was found moving around upon the ground. A voice came from incorruptibility to help Adam. The rulers gathered all the animals of the earth and all the birds of the sky and brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them, that he might give a name to each of the birds and all the animals. The rulers took Adam and put him in the garden, that he might cultivate it and watch over it. They commanded him and said, You may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not touch it, for in the day ye eat from it, you will surely die. They said this to him, but they did not understand what they said to him. Rather, by the Father's will, they said this in such a way that Adam might eat, and Adam might not perceive them as would a completely material person. The rulers plotted together and said, Come, let us make a deep sleep fall upon Adam. So Adam slept. The deep sleep they made to fall upon him, and he slept. His ignorance. They cut open his side like a living woman. They repaired his side with the flesh in place of her. And Adam had only a soul. The woman of spirit came to him and spoke with him, saying, Arise, Adam. When he saw her, he said, You have given me life, and you will be called mother of living, for she is my mother. She is a physician, a woman, one who has given birth. The authorities approached their Adam when they saw his female partner speaking with him. They became aroused and lusted after her, and said to each other, Come, let us ejaculate our semen in her. This is, um, on, um, I don't know if anybody's heard about the, um, it's called Serpent Seed Doctrine, but this is kind of what I have coming to mind right now when I'm reading this. <clears throat> Come, let's ejaculate our semen in her. And they chased her, but she laughed at them because of their foolishness and blindness. 
In their grasp, she turned into a tree. And when she left for them a shadow of herself that looked like her, they defiled it sexually. They defiled the seal of her voice. And so they convicted themselves through the form they had shaped in their own image. Yeah, they convicted themselves through the form they had shaped in their own image. See, so I've explained this also. The creation of Adam and Eve was these guys' demise, man. Um, little did they know that, but that's how it turned out. <clears throat> that's what it just said right there. The female spiritual presence came in the shape of the serpent. The female spiritual presence came in the shape of the serpent. The instructor. The serpent taught Adam and Eve and said, What did Samael say to you? Did he say, You may eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The woman of flesh said, Not only did he say, do not eat, but also do not touch it. For the day you eat from it, you will surely die. The serpent, the instructor, said, You will not surely die. For he said this to you out of jealousy. Rather, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. And the female instructor was taken away from the serpent, and she abandoned it as something of the earth. They eat from the tree. The woman of flesh took from the tree and ate, and she gave it to her husband as well. And thus these beings, who had only a soul, ate. Their imperfection became apparent in their ignorance, and they recognized that they were stripped of the spiritual, and they took fig leaves and tried to hide around their naked bodies, and tied them around their naked bodies. Honestly guys, I believe all of this. This all makes so much sense. I've been studying this stuff for more than a decade. And this um, this this is absolutely brilliant stuff. This Nakamati Codices, every time I read a book in this thing, it's just like, wow. This is exactly it just it just, you know, it fits the pieces perfectly. Per perfectly. It makes the puzzle. You know what I'm saying? It makes it. The leader of the Archons came and said, Where are you, Adam? For he did not know what had happened. Adam said, I heard your voice and was afraid because I was naked. And so I hid. The ruler said, Why did you hide? Unless it is because you ate from the only tree from which I commanded you not to eat. You did eat. Adam said, The woman you gave me offered me the fruit, and I ate. And the arrogant ruler cursed the woman. The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The rulers turned to the serpent and cursed its shadow, so that it was powerless. And they did not know it was a form they themselves had shaped. From then on, the serpent was under the curse of the authorities. The curse was on the serpent until the perfect human was to come. The ruler turned to their Adam. They took him and cast him and his wife out of the garden. They have no blessing, for they are also under the curse. The rulers threw humanity into great confusion in a life of toil, so that their people might be preoccupied with things of the world and not have time to be occupied with the Holy Spirit. Well, that makes a lot of sense. After this, Eve gave birth to Cain, their son, and Cain farmed the land. Then Adam had sex with his wife. She became pregnant again and gave birth to Abel. And Abel was a shepherd, and Cain brought in produce from his field, and Abel brought an offering from his lands. God 
looked with favor upon the offering of Abel, but he did not accept the offering of Cain. Cain, man of flesh, pursued Abel his brother. God said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain answered and said, Am I my brother's keeper? God said to Cain, Listen, the voice of your brother's blood is calling to me. You have sinned with your mouth and it will come back to you. Whoever kills Cain will release seven vendettas, and you will live groaning and shaking upon the earth. Adam had sex with his partner Eve again. She became pregnant and bore Seth for Adam. She said, I have given birth to another person through God in place of Abel. Eve became pregnant again and gave birth to Noria. Eve said, He has produced for me a virgin. A virgin to help many human generations. <clears throat> Noria is the virgin whom the forces did not defile. And humanity began to multiply and develop. Noah and the flood. <clears throat> the rulers plotted together and said, Come, let us cause a flood with our own hands and destroy all flesh, animal and human. When the ruler of the forces learned of their plan, he said to Noah, Make an ark of wood that will not rot and hide in it, and you and your children and the animals and the birds of the sky, large and small, put it on Mount Sur. Ora came to Noah. Ora and um, Noria, they're the same. They're the same person. It explained that in um, in the introduction. Came to Noah and wanted to board the ark when he would not let her. She blew on the ark and made it burn up, so he rebuilt the ark. The rulers went to meet Noria, for they planned to seduce her. Their leader said to her, Your mother Eve came to us. But Noria turned to them and said, You are the rulers of the darkness, damn you. You did not have sex with my mother, but with one of your own ilk. For I am not of you from you, I am from the world above. The arrogant ruler turned with his might, and his expression was like a blazing fire. He was bold toward her and said, You must serve us sexually, as your mother Eve did, for I have been given. But Nora turned with the power of God and called in a loud voice to the Holy One, the God of all. Help me with these unrighteous rulers, and rescue me from their hands now. An angel came down from heaven and said to her, Why are you calling to God? Why are you so bold toward the Holy Spirit? Noria, Noria said, Who are you? The unrighteous rulers had left her. The angel said, I am Elias, understanding, the great angel who stands before the, before the Holy Spirit. I have been sent to speak with you and rescue you from the hand of the lawless ones, and I shall teach you about your root. The Dialogue of Noria and Elias I cannot describe the power of that angel. Its appearance is like fine gold, and its garment is like snow. Sweet me. My mouth simply cannot bear to speak of its power and the appearance of its face. The great angel Elliot spoke to me and said, I am understanding. I am one of the four luminaries who stand before the great invisible spirit. Do you think these rulers have power over you? None of them can overpower the root of truth. For on behalf of the root of truth, a figure has appeared in the last days. And these authorities will be restrained. These authorities cannot defile you, 
for that generation. For your home is with incorruptibility, where the virgin spirit dwells, who is superior to the authorities of chaos in their world. Eliot's Story of Creation I said, my lord, teach me about the power of these authorities. How did they come into being? What kind of nature? Of what material? Who created them and their power? The great angel Eliot, who is understanding, said to me, incorruptibility dwells within the infinite realms. Sophia, who is called Pistis, wanted to create something by herself, without her partner and what she produced was from above. There is a certain, there is a curtain between the realms above and the aeons below. A shadow formed beneath the curtain, and the shadow became matter, and the shadow was cast into a region. What she produced came to be something material, like an aborted fetus. It took shape from the shadow, and it became an arrogant beast, resembling a lion. It was androgynous, as I already said, because it came from matter. The beast opened his eyes and saw a vast amount of matter without limit. And he became arrogant and said, I am God, but there is none but me. When he said this, he sinned against the realm of the all. A voice came from above, the tyrannical realm, and said, You are wrong, Samael, which means blind God. He said, If anything exists before me, let me see it. At once, Sophia pointed her finger and brought light into matter, and she pursued it down to the region of chaos, where she returned up to her light darkness, to her light darkness once again came upon matter. This ruler was androgynous and made himself a huge realm, an expanse without limit. He considered creating for himself offspring, and he created for himself seven offspring, androgynous like their parents, and he said to his children, I am God of all. Zo, daughter of Pistis Sophia, called out and said to him, You are wrong, scholar whose name is understood as Yaldaboleth. Zo breathed into his face, and her breath became for her a fiery angel. And that angel bound Yaldaboleth and cast him down into Tartarus, at the bottom of the abyss. When Sabaoth, son of Yaldaboleth, saw the strength of that angel, he repented and condemned his father and his mother matter. So both loathed his mother, but he sent songs of praise up to Sophia and her daughter Zoe. Sophia and Zoe took him up and established him over the seventh heaven below the curtain, curtain between what is above and what is below. He is called God of the Powers, Sabbath. He is above the powers of chaos, for Sophia established him. When these things happened, Sabbath made himself a huge four-faced chariot, cherubim, and an infinity of angels as ministers, and harps and lyres. Sophia took her daughter Zoe and made her sit at his right to teach him about the things that are in the eighth heaven, and she put the angel of wrath at his left. Since that day, his right hand, his right, had been called life, and the left has represented the unrighteousness of the tyrannical realm above. These things happened before your time. It kind of gives me a picture of something that, uh, you know, 
she put the angel of wrath at his left. Since that day, his right had been called life, and the left has represented the unrighteousness of the tyrannical realm above. These things happened before your time. Cool. When Yaldabaoth saw Sabbath exalted in such a great glory on high, he envied him, and his envy became something androgynous. This was the beginning of envy. Envy produced death, and death produced children, and death put each in charge of the heaven, and the heavens of chaos were full of their masses. But all these things came to be by the will of the Father of the All. <clears throat> after the pattern of the all that is above, so that the sum total of chaos might be reached. Look, I have taught you about the form of the rulers and the matter in which the form was produced, their parent and the world. I said, my Lord, I am also from their matter. You and your offspring are from the Father, who was from the beginning. The souls come from above, from incorruptible light. So the authorities cannot approach them because of the spirit of truth within them. And all who know this way of truth are deathless among dying humanity. But that offspring will not appear now. It will appear after three ages and free them from the bondage of the authorities' error. I said, my Lord, how long will it be? And he said to me, until the time when the true human in human form reveals the spirit of truth that the Father has sent. Then he will teach them about everything and anoint them with the oil of eternal life given from the generation without a king. Well, oh, that's giving me chills, man. You know what that is. It's Jesus, right? And they will be free of blind thought. Ooh, that's so deep. They will be free of blind thought. You know, you're always thinking about what you're going to do. Sometimes you don't even do it. That's blind thought, guys. That's why, that's why we put our faith in God and we rest in his work. Okay? Give him the glory, man, because he, he deserves it. Amen. Then they will be freed of blind thought. They will trample death, which is of the authorities, and they will send into the infinite light where this offspring is. Then the authorities will surrender their, age, their years and ages, and the angels will weep over their destruction, and the demons will mourn over their death. Then all the children of the light will know the truth and their root and the father of the all and the Holy Spirit. They will all say with one voice, the father is truth but just. The child is over all and with everyone forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. So we stop. All right. We're going to stop there.